Trump is chaos. There is a difference between truth and lies. There is a difference between real news and fake news. There's a difference between actual conspiracies and imagined ones. And we cannot afford to have hundreds of millions of people in our own society on the wrong side of those epistemological chasms. And we certainly can't afford to have members of our own government on the wrong side of them. As I've said many, many times before, all we have is conversation, right? You have conversation and violence. That's how we can influence one another. When things really matter and words are insufficient, people show up with guns. That is the way things are. So we have to create the conditions where conversations work. And now we are living in an environment where words have become almost totally ineffectual. And that this is what has been so harmful, I would say, about Trump's candidacy and his first few weeks as president. I mean, just the degree to which the man lies and the degree to which his supporters do not care, that is one of the most dangerous things to happen in my lifetime politically. There simply has to be a consequence for lying on this level. And the retort from a Trump fan is, well, all politicians lie. No, all politicians don't lie like this. You look at what's happening in Germany. You look at what's happening last night in Sweden. Sweden. Who would believe this? Sweden. They took in large numbers. They're having problems like they never thought possible. What we are witnessing with Trump and the people around him is something quite new. Even if I grant that all politicians lie a lot, I don't even know if I should grant that. All politicians lie sometimes, say. But even in their lying, they have to endorse the norm of truth-telling. That's what it means to lie successfully in politics, in a former age of the earth. You can't be obviously lying. You can't obviously be repudiating the very norm of honest communication. But what Trump has done, and the people around him have gotten caught in the same vortex, it's almost like a giddy nihilism in politics, right? Where it's just, you just say whatever you want, and it doesn't matter if it's true. Just try to stop me, is the attitude. It's unbelievable. So finally on this point, I would just say that finding ways to span this chasm between people, finding ways where we can reliably influence one another through conversation based on shared norms of argumentation and self-criticism. That is the operating system we need. That is the only thing that stands between us and chaos. And there are the people who are trying to build that, then there are the people who are trying to tear it down. And now one of those people is president. And again, I, I really don't think this is too strong. Trump is, by all appearances, consciously destroying the fabric of civil conversation. And his supporters really don't seem to care. And I'm sure that those of you who support him will think I'm just whinging now in a spirit of partisanship, right? That's why I'm against Trump. I'm a Democrat or I'm a liberal. That's just not the case. Most normal Republican candidates, who I might dislike for a variety of reasons, you know, Marco Rubio or Jeb Bush, or even a quasi-theocrat like Ted Cruz, would still function within the normal channels of attempting a fact-based conversation about the world. Their lies would be normal lies. And when caught, there'd be a penalty to pay. They would lose face. Trump has no face to lose. This is an epistemological potlatch. Do you know what a potlatch is? 
say, traditional native practice of burning up your wealth, burning up your prized possessions, so as to prove how wealthy you are, right? Look at me. I can burn down my own house. This is a potlatch of civil discourse. Every time Trump speaks, he's saying, I don't have to make sense. I'm too powerful to even have to make sense. That is his message. And half the country, or nearly half, seems to love it. So when he's caught in a lie, he has no face to lose. Trump is chaos. And one of the measures of how bad he seems to me is that I don't even care about the theocrats he has brought to power with him. And there are many of them. You know, he has brought in Christian fundamentalists to a degree that would have been unthinkable 10 years ago. And 10 years ago, I was spending a lot of time worrying about the rise of the Christian right in this country. Well, it, it has risen under Trump, but honestly, it seems like the least of our problems at this moment. And it's amazing for me to say that, given what it means and might yet mean to have people like Pence and Jeff Sessions and the other Christian fundamentalists in his orbit empowered in this way.